morning, my vibe. It's so good to be with you guys on this morning. Um, we're back here again. We're so excited. I know last week we did things a little different. We hope you enjoyed your Mother's Day and you enjoyed your time with worship with us um, last week. I'm just going to ask you to worship with us this morning. Lay everything at God's feet and let's just get into some worship. Amen.
we just thank you on this morning, Lord. God, we thank you because you prove over and over that you are so faithful to your children, God. God, we thank you because when we're not faithful, Father, you are Jesus. God, we thank you because wherever we go, Father God, your goodness follows us wherever we go, Father. We thank you for your goodness, Father God. We thank you for your love that's so unconditional, Father. God, and we just surrender everything to you on this morning, Father God. We give you our everything on this morning, Father God. God, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. God, and we proclaim and declare that you are holy, Father God. You are holy, Father God. There is none like you in all the worlds, Father God. In all the earth, Father God, there is nothing like you. Nothing can stand be uh, beside you or, or before you. Nothing, God. And we just thank you, Jesus. God, we worship you on this morning, Father God. God, we give you total access on this morning, Father God. God, we surrender everything to you on this day, Father God. We give you everything, Father God. Everything on this morning, Jesus. Thank you, God. sometimes, Father, to just lay all our cares and worries on you, Father. But God, it's not our job to carry around all this luggage, God. It's not our job. We're not strong enough for it, Father. And we thank you, God, because you're more than enough and you're more than capable, Father God, of lifting every care. You are the lifter of our heads on this morning. Father God, and we just thank you for that, God. Humbly I stand and offering. 
Jesus. We lay it in your hands, oh Lord. We surrender all to you. We surrender all to you. We lay it at your feet, Jesus. We lay it in your hands, oh Lord. We surrender all to you. We surrender. in your hands Jesus we lay our anxiety in your hands Jesus we lay everything down at your feet Jesus we surrender all to you we surrender all to you every worry God we cast before you every fear Lord we cast before you we surrender all, we surrender all, we surrender all to you. Have your way, take control, take the burden, God, and replace it, Lord, with your peace. As you just lay those cares before him, as you just lay that anxiety, as you just lay whatever situation you might be going through in this very moment, if you could just present it before, the, before our God, before our King, and just say, God, this is what I'm going through, this is what I'm feeling, this is what I'm battling. If you could just take that and just lay it down, and while you lay it down, you just say, God, I believe that you're working in my life. And I believe it because I can raise my hand and worship. I can raise my hands and worship. I can open my mouth and worship even through the mist. So right there where you're at, just lift your hands up. And just begin to worship because God is moving. Because God is in control. He's in control. So just surrender it. And as you surrender, give thanks with your worship, knowing that God is sealing it. God is working on your behalf. joining us this morning via YouTube. My name's Jose and I'm the pastor of Revive. I just want to thank you for joining us this morning. And I'm just going to jump right into the word this morning. I'm not going to take too long. Uh, the weather's going to be beautiful. I heard the beaches are open. Be careful. Hope to see you there, but keep your distance. Amen. Let us turn today in the book of Numbers, chapter 13. And I'm going to skip through the chapter. I'm going to be reading from the NIV version, verses 1 and 2. And then I'm going to turn to Numbers 13, verses 31 and 33. And it reads like this. The Lord said to Moses, send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving 
to the Israelites. Numbers 13, 31 and 33. But the men who had gone up with him said, We can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, The land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are a great size. We saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Anak, come from the Nephilim. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. Two weeks ago, I was talking about how Israel was in the desert and God was going to take them to the promised land. And this morning, I want to take you back to that moment where they're at the border of the promised land. God sent them over to the promised land to check it out, see what it is. And some came back with good report, some came back with bad report. But this morning, I want to say that the reason why they didn't reach the promised land or didn't get to go to the promised land wasn't because of the giants. It wasn't because they thought of themselves. Well, it is because they thought of themselves as grasshoppers. But they didn't get the promise because of the giants. They, got the, they didn't get the promise because of the mindset. They viewed themselves as grasshoppers. They viewed themselves as something smaller. And even though God had promised them the land, God had given them a promise of their own land, their own territory. They don't have to pay rent no more. This is your own house. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. They disqualified themselves because of the way they thought about themselves. And a lot of times in our lives, we disqualify ourselves because of the mindset that we have. Our thinking process sometimes stops us from getting the promise that God has over our lives. Some things that we dwell on, some things that we make bigger than what they are. Now, this thinking process was already in them when God made them the promise. God already knew that thinking process, but he was saying, listen... I have this for you. This is for you. Amen. So today I want to talk to you about our mindsets, our thinking habits. I want to give you some pointers maybe on how to work on it on a daily basis. You see, our thoughts control our feelings. And our feelings control our actions. When they came back with the report, there was 12 of them. Two of them had faith that we could take over the land. But 10 of them said, no, I think we're better off in Egypt. I think we're better off in the desert. I think we're better off the way we are now. We have to be careful of the thoughts that we allow people to put in our minds. We have to be careful of the people we keep around us that will speak things into our minds that will stop us from seeing the promise that God has over our lives. When they came back, they let fear come into their minds. They came back to tell the people all the bad stuff. You see, they used the word but. Verse 31 says, but. That word but cancels anything that you said before that. So God gave them the the land. God gave them, God gave Israel the promise. But there's something wrong. But it's too hard. But I don't see myself in that position. But. But and but cancels everything prior to that. Sometimes we could get something positive from God and we just disqualify disqualify ourselves from that. We let fear come in. We let anxiety come in. We let anger come in. We let worry come in. And that those are the things that we dwell on. Those are the things that we start to think about. So our thought process starts to control our actions 
And just because you don't go forward doesn't stop you from going backwards. It's still an action. And God wants you to go forward, not backwards. So here we have a group of people that were supposed to go forward. But the mindset put them back in the desert. The mindset kept them in the desert going around in circles for 40 years because of a mindset. You could be going around in circles with different people and still have the same type of issues because it's a mindset. It's a thought process. Thoughts are the beginning of where our attitude begins. Our choices begins with our feelings. You ever wake up in the morning upset? Mad? I used to wake up in the morning mad for no reason, with anger. And it wasn't until probably 10 years ago where I started to learn how to talk myself out of the anger. But before I used to wake up angry and my whole day would be up, messed up because I was upset. And it drove my attitude in a negative form because of whatever was in my mind. And I started to dwell on things and I started to just nitpick and it was a mess. How you feel is how you would act. The mind and heart work together. Sometimes you start feeling bad and anxious, now you start thinking about negative stuff. You start feeling negative about somebody, now you start assuming that that person is saying this about you or you know how it is, gossip starts to happen. And it's a whole mess with the mind. The mind is a powerful thing. But when used in a negative form, it slows us down. It stops us from getting to the promise. Now, you can't control the thoughts that come into your mind. But you can control the thoughts that you dwell on. You can't control the thoughts that go into your mind. But you can control the thoughts that you dwell on. You ever got dressed to go somewhere? Go to the mall? Maybe today you guys are planning to go to the beach or something. Did you ever have somebody knock on the door and hold you up right before you about to leave? And all of a sudden you have to entertain that person. And because you entertain that person, you can't go to the destination that you wanted to go to. That came unannounced. Maybe that hasn't happened to you, but it happens to me. Used to happen to me a lot. Same thing with your thoughts. The more you entertain negative thoughts, the longer it would take you to get to your destination. You can't entertain your thoughts. You can't entertain thoughts that would delay you from reaching your destination. The more negative thoughts that you have in your mind would delay you from reaching your destination. Israel didn't get to their destination because of their mindset. Their mind started to control their feelings. Your feelings turned into anger. Anger turned into action. And they started to rebel against the word of God. And they started to rebel against the people of God. And because of that, they started to go around in circles in the desert. We have to be careful not to fall into a thinking pattern that will stop us from reaching the promises of God. Today, I want to give you two pointers that I use for myself on a daily basis. And I've been doing this for the past 10, 15 years, and I'm still doing it because I, I have to still work on myself. We're not done until God calls us up to heaven, amen? You have to get to the source of your thought process. What is getting, getting you to that point? Where did that thought come from? Was it something that happened in the past? Was it something that somebody said? Was it a bad report? Where did that thought come from? Where's that source coming from? Is there something that I need to forgive? Is there something that I need to let go of? Is there something that happened to me that is causing me to feel this way? Whatever it is, we have to find the source of our thought process. Was it rejection? 
because it hurt. Did you trust somebody that was supposed to protect you and they didn't? Was somebody supposed to raise you a different way and they didn't? Are you comparing yourself to other people? What is the cause of your thought process? What is causing you to keep thinking the same way every single day? What is causing you to go down that road? If there's a person that made you think this way or feel this way, do you need to forgive that person? Is there unforgiveness in our hearts that keep us in that thought process? Like I said earlier, when the person knocked on your door, there's thoughts that knock on our door every single day. And if we're not careful, those thoughts will drive us to do things that we shouldn't do. Those thoughts will drive us to anxiety. Those thoughts will drive us into anger. Those thoughts will drive us to worry. So we have to get to the source of the thought. If you get to the source of it, then you can start healing from it. Now, I know that we could go see the doctor and we could get medicine for our anxiety. We could get other things for our anxiety. And we could do other things for our anxiety like partying or, you know, you can't party now because of this coronavirus thing. But you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes we medicate our own selves to get over the hurt and pain or the thought process. But you never get to the root of it. And you find yourself in a circle, not knowing how to get out of it. You find yourself in a circle, not knowing how to change. And you want to change, you just don't know how to get there. You have to find the root of it. You have to analyze yourself on a daily basis. You have to check yourself. Why am I thinking this way? What caused me to think this way? Why do I think about myself this way? Israelites was thinking about the, that they was grasshoppers, that they were small compared to these people. Who told them they was grasshoppers? Nobody told them they was grasshoppers. They told themselves. That's how they described themselves. It's a thought process. It's a mind check. Once you get to the source, now back to the medication. I just want to share this part. It just came to me. For the past three years, I've been dealing with uh, plantar fasciitis. If, if you don't know what that is, it's like a, a muscle under your feet. It's, it's sort of like uh, you start feeling pins and needles. It turns into, into like a nut. It's like, it's like a Charlie horse under your feet that never strains out. And I went to go see the doctor uh, because I was feeling pain. I felt a knot under my foot. And I felt pins and needles after a certain amount of hours at my job. So I went to the doctors and the doctor was saying, you know, this is what you have. It's, it's a long process to heal. But I could give you a cortisone shot. It would numb it up and you won't feel that pain. And I said, okay, cool. I, I You know, that sounds great, but let me ask you a question. If I take the cortisone shot, I feel no pain. She says, right. I said, but then I would act like I would still do my normal activities, like there's nothing wrong with my foot. She goes, right. I said, okay. I said, but what happens if I do something that is not right? Can I make my foot worse? She goes, yes, you could tear your muscle and we would need surgery and it would take a longer process for you to be back on your feet. So I said, no, I don't want the cortisone shot. I said, I'd rather know that the pain is there and I'd rather do the techniques that, that will help me with my pain, even though it takes longer to heal. So I work out every night to bring it back to healing. Why do I say that? Some things that we do to get us past the pain works for a little bit. The body itself, if you, if you uh, 
use medication, any type of medication, the body itself gets accustomed to that medication and doesn't work anymore. Then you're back to square one. So we, medication helps you get by, but it doesn't get to the root of the problem. Medication gets you feeling a little bit better, but it doesn't get to the root of it. And what happens is when you don't get to the root of the situation, then you start, you start, you start to tear apart relationships. You start to tear apart people around you. You start to tear yourself apart, not knowing what to do. When you find out the source of where you're thinking is coming from, you have to learn how to disconnect from them. And when you disconnect from your thoughts, you have to learn how to replace them. What does that mean? I know most of you guys own computers. And I know sometimes after a period of time, the computer starts to act slow. And I remember probably like five years ago, people used to call me before the cell phone blew up because now the cell phone is like a computer in your pocket. They used to call me, hey, my computer's sluggish, it's slowing down, something's wrong, can you come over? So I used to go to people's houses and check the, now I'm not an IT person, I'm not a computer person, that's not what I do. But I learned how to work computers on my own after breaking three or four of them on my own. Learn how to how they work. But anyway, I will go over to the house and I will see that they will have too much memory on their computer. In other words, they had too many pictures or they've been through too many websites and they didn't know how to clear the memory from there. So they were trying to put something new into the computer, but there was not enough space because they was holding on to too many old stuff. So, in order for something new to be in that computer, there were some files that I had to delete. There was some history that I had to remove in order for them to progress in the computer or add more stuff to the computer. And some of us want to change, and some of us want better for ourselves, some of us want better for our family. But there's some old thought processes that we have to remove in order for new ones to be created in our minds. We have to get rid of the old stuff and activate some new things in your life. There's some memories that needs to be deleted, some history that needs to be forgotten, some history that needs to be forgiven so that we can enter into the promises of God. You have to do this on a daily basis. Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will for your life. When your mind is changed, your life will be transformed. Where your mind goes, your life will follow. Do you want to be in a desert or do you want to be in a promise? Do you want to be in the desert going around in circles? Or do you want to be in God's will and trust God? You could have God in your life and still not trust his will over your life. You could still have God in your life and still have a desert mindset. And even though Israel had a desert mindset, God still provided for them. God just wanted more for his people. That's the type of God that we serve. That's the, God, the type of God that we have. He always wants more for his children. God wanted more for his people, for his children. But they chose the desert. And it wasn't until 40 years later that the next generation came in and took over the promise. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to wait for the next generation. I want my promise now. I want to live in the promise that God has for me, the will of God over my life now. And I'm not going to let 
any thought process knocking on my door, delaying me from reaching my destination. So God wants to bless you right where you're at. That's his heart, is to bless you. But we have to change the way we think. We have to figure out what is the root cause of it. And we have to make changes so that we can see the will of God in our lives. So right where you are, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, all you have to do is repeat after me. Father, I confess my sins. I confess that I have sinned against you. And I come to you right now, surrendering all to you and accepting you as my Lord and Savior, accepting that sacrifice that you have done for me on the cross. Come into my life, come into my heart, come into my mind. Change me from the inside out. If you have prayed that prayer, right now at this moment you are saved and the Holy Spirit will start to deal with you. The Holy Spirit will start to teach you things about yourself. But you know the last thing that we need to do when we realize what we've been thinking about is to accept it. It's to, if you don't accept it, you won't change it. If you don't admit to it, you don't change it. Allow the Holy Spirit to check you. Allow the Holy Spirit to help you with your mindset. Don't delay no longer. God wants to bless you. Amen. So I'm going to pray for you. Father, right now, I pray for every person that is listening. I pray for every person that has tuned in. Father, you know our minds, you know our hearts. You know the will that you have over every single person that is here. And I pray a, a blessing over their lives. I pray, Father God, that you will meet them right where they're at. I pray, Father God, that you will provide every single need that they have. And that they will see this whole time that you've been providing for them. Father, I pray that they will get to a place to worship you and you alone. Father, I thank you for every person that is tuned in. I pray a hedge of protection over them and their families. Keep them safe where they're at. Protect them at their jobs. Protect them in their homes. So I pray, Father God, I had your protection over everybody that's listening right now. And we ask you, Father God, that you will keep them and bless them. In Jesus' name we pray and we all say, Amen. Guys, enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your Sunday. If you go out to the beach, the beaches are open. Please be careful, be safe, still practice social distancing, and I can't wait to see you guys soon. God bless you, we love you, see you later.